more time. But who will miss you when you leave? Who will miss you when you leave? Who will miss you when you leave? Who will miss you? If I if I if I'm to ask right now, if I ask right now, how many people have been so environments where it could be school environment, you know, the community where you live, or maybe certain church where you've been, and then you walked away and no one noticed. Have you ever explained that kind of thing? You walked away from a place, you've stayed for at least a year, no one noticed. Can I see your hand up? Why are you lying? It's true. It's true. Be honest. Remember, we're in church. Remember Ananas and Sapphira. Yes. So now that you have remembered Ananas and Sapphira, <laughs> let me now ask again. You've been in a community where after one year you walked away. Nobody even felt your absence. Let me see your hand up. We have one honest person, second honest person, a third honest person. And then we have a whole lot of people who need deliverance. Yeah. You see, the reality of life is we will be remembered, like I've said in the first, second, and, first and second services, you'll be remembered for the problem you solved or for the problem you caused. Now, ask your neighbor, what will you be remembered for? The problem you solved or the one you caused? So it's either you are a problem solver or you are a problem causer. You are not neutral. Who will miss you when you leave? Who will feel your absence? Who will feel like, oh, I wish she was still here? What impact are you making? What are you contributing? What value are you adding? Uh, and it's not just about the church. Even in your place of work, there are people who resign and no one notices. There are people who resign. The day they are resigning, people are shedding tears like, don't go, don't go. I've even seen, you know, a situation where somebody is packing out of a compound and people, they are like, oh, is there anything we can do to make you stay? Is there anything else we can do to make you stay? Why? Because of the impact, significance. And reality is that God puts inside every human being the desire for significance. Every one of us has it. Everyone. You want your life to count. You want your life to have a meaning. You want your, your life to be worth it at the end of the day. You want to know that you lived a worthwhile life. But you see, a worthwhile life doesn't just fall upon your laps. It's something you make happen. It's something you make happen. When you leave, we will cry. When you walk away, we will notice. What contribution are you making? What impact do you have on your community, on your environment? What impact are you having in your church, in your local assembly? Uh, so another question to ask is, if everyone was like you, um, would we have fun in church? Would church, be, would church still be a place to come to, you would love to come to, if everyone was like you? Would, would the church still be that place that people love to come to, where lives are changed and transformed? There's no non-entity. There's no non-entity. Acts chapter 9, verse 36. New Living Translation. There was a believer in Joppa named Tabitha, which in Greek is Dorcas.
She was always doing kind things for others and helping the poor. About the time she became ill and died, her body was washed for burial and laid in an upstairs room. But the believers had heard that Peter was nearby a leader. So they sent two men to beg him, please come as soon as possible. So Peter returned. Can you Im imagine? Okay, let me not jump ahead of myself. So Peter returned with them. And as soon as he arrived, they took him to the upstairs room. The room was filled with widows who were weeping and showing him the coats and other clothes Dockers had made for them. I mean, somebody dies and the people say, you know what? We ain't going to bury this woman. You are not going anywhere. You will not go. We will refuse to let you go. And they had to wash her, put her aside. And they went to seek for Peter to come and bring her back to life. In other words, you are too valuable for us to let you go. You are too valuable to leave us now. You can't leave us right now. We will miss you when you're gone. Can you imagine if this woman lived just the casual life? She would have been gone forever. No one would have had given her any second chance. Oh, she don't die. Oh, okay. When we bury her, we go chop there. Oh. She'll be gone for good. She'll be gone for good. And I can assure you, she's probably not the only one that died in that town that day. Not the only one. You know, about 200,000 plus people die every day. 200,000 plus people every single day. So it's likely in that time she probably wasn't the only person. But I said this one, no. Why? Because of the value, because of the impact, the contribution. She made, she not only lived a meaningful life, she made other people's life worth living as well. So when Peter came to, 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 to validate the trouble that put Peter through to have brought him there, they began to show up. Peter, you see, this jacket is this man that gave me. Somebody has come. This shoe is this man that gave me. Another person come. This belt, this shoe. Wow. One life. One life. One life. It's amazing what you can do with your life if you choose to live a selfless life. Selfishness doesn't pay. Oh, it may offer you and afford you some immediate benefit, but in the long run, you are soon forgotten because you only lived for you as it were. You got one life to live. I've always said that. You must make it count. Making it count is a decision. It's a choice. It's a decision. The moment you make that decision, for some of us probably today, you begin to see that every other thing begin to change in your life. The way you spend your time, the people you hang around, every other thing will just simply change. The moment you make up your mind and say, you know what? I must make my life count. I must live a life of significance. I gave one of the examples I gave in the first and second service is a story of one young girl. I probably didn't mention her name in those two services. Her name was Titi. She was just 23. 23 years old girl. Just 23. A very young girl. And then suddenly... She grew sick, and before we knew what was happening, she was gone. That was in my home church in House on the Rock, to be precise. When we heard it, everyone was shocked. Everyone was devastated. Every member of the church, leaders, members who knew her, people wept. My sister and my wife's sister was living with us then, Sister Victoria. She worked for several days. She worked for about a week every single day. You see her eyes red, tears. She was withdrawn. 
for the life of one person. And the same thing was happening in different places to different people. On the day of our funeral, we came to church, you know, the church was filled up. Walk out. Filled up. People took leave to just be there. No one wanted to miss it. And I was one of the officiating ministers that day. I took the mic to speak. I broke down. I dropped the mic. I went to the back of the stage. I wasn't the only one who cried. Virtually all the pastors cried, including the senior pastor, Pastor Paul, at the person. He could not even come up stage. He did not even minister at the funeral. We took charge of the service, but even we that took charge, we couldn't take charge. Because it was a, a breaking experience for all of us. The life of one little girl. And then when we now went to put her in the ground at um, the cemetery in Lekki, the convoy of over 50 vehicles. I've never seen that personally in my life. People were asking, who is, is this person a king? They thought it was a king who died. That's why you have that length of convoy of vehicles. A 23-year-old girl. What made the difference? Every life she met, she touched. Every life she... She left a mark on everyone. She left a mark. That's why no, no, no one could be strong enough when she passed. Everyone broke. Because you always remember what she did. It could be a word in season. It could be a word in season. It could be a smile. She had something, but it could be a gift. Almost like she knew she wasn't going to live that long. That 23 years that she lived was probably the most worthy 23 years I've ever seen. For that younger to impact a whole community of a church like that. One soul, one life, one life. You see, many times we, are, we have the erroneous belief that impact is according to age. It's not true. It's not by age. You can be six years without impacting anybody. It's a decision you make, it's a choice you make, that my life will touch the people around me. I would give my best anywhere I find myself. I would pour myself. I'm not going to hold back anything. It's a decision you make. It's a choice you make. You see, in life, the majority of people want to be served. But the few people who impact this world are those who choose to serve. And those who choose to serve. So what choice are you making this afternoon? Who will miss you when you leave? Who will miss you? Who will miss you? Will you be remembered for the problem you caused? Oh, that girl, uh, that, is it which one? Can you imagine? Which one? Oh, that one that gossips everywhere. What a label. Oh, that, that guy has left. Which one? Ah, that one that is always fighting everyone. What a label. Oh, that guy has left. Which one? That humble guy that serves selflessly and passionately. What will you be remembered for? Who will miss you when you're gone? Now, as young people, let me let you know, as a roundup, 
You see, the solution to the problem of this world is largely in your hands. In Joel chapter 2, verse 28, when God was talking about pouring out his spirit in the last days and all, and all that, when it came to young people, he talked about young people as visionaries. 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 We have a very erroneous idea about young people. And some of us young people also have that idea. Think that young people are just merely takers. When this ministry started, especially when we moved down here, and I, it became apparent that God was leading me to focus on young people. I told a couple of my colleagues in the ministry, my, so, some pastors, and, and, they, and they told me, don't try that. Don't try, you want to suffer. That's what they told me. So young people, they're only going to come, on, come and take from you. They're not going to give anything. And you spend and spend and spend until you're exhausted and get tired and you get broke and pack up. He said, focus on those who can bring the resources for, for the work. And, you know, they said a lot. For a, for a while, it made some sense. For a few days, I thought of it that this thing sounds intelligent and factual. But after a couple of days, I said to myself, no. Someday, sometime, you will stand before God. And you are going to give account. What will you give account to God for? And I made a choice. So, so that's the idea. But sadly, sometimes we confirm it. We confirm it. How can you be a young person? You are in your late teens, early 20s, or even late 20s, or even early 30s. And you're still waiting for life to turn up for you rather than make things happen. What you don't understand is that there are lots of people who are depending on you. The responsibility for this generation is on your shoulders. The people that the enemy is most after are young people like you. I gave some statistics in the second service. There are about 229 million people in Nigeria. 70% of them are young people. And that makes up about 160 million people like you. 160 million people. And it is interesting to know that a handful of them, about 40% or so, are on drugs. That's probably about 64 million. Is that, if that is not enough to break your heart, what else will? And several millions have contracted HIV. If that's not enough to break your heart, what else will? You've got a solution. You are light. You are not light to, to serve yourself. Jesus said no one puts on a light and puts it under the bushel. It brings it out to the open so I can lit up the environment. You are light. You're light. You're light. I want you to carry the burden for people of your age. Don't be content just coming to church and sitting down hearing the message. After hearing the message, go out there and look for young people like you to impact. Look for young people like you to show them a better way. When I saw the light, when Jesus gave me, showed me the light, when I encountered Jesus, that was exactly the same thing I did. I came back to my neighborhood Told them I found something. Oh yes, the pressure was still so much because of the kind of role I played in my community for the devil. And so for a couple of months, I was here and there. But after a couple of months, I made up my mind all the way, all the way, all the way, all the way. And then once that happened, I became literally a transporter for Jesus. Every time I'm going to church, I must go with one person, one old friend, all the way from Ikeja to Akoka, pay the transport. 
So I was always trying to get money for transportation. Sometimes we'll charter a taxi and make sure that taxi is loaded. The money is justified. Loaded. Cram ourselves from a keja to a coca. Many of my friends got saved as a result. Many of them, my friends got saved. Many of my friends. I went to the university, the same thing happened. The same thing happened. You see, you either walk through this earth, and when you are gone, no one will notice that you came. Or you walk through this earth, and when you are gone, everyone will talk about the fact that you passed through them and they felt your impact. Everyone. But you see, the choice is yours. I remember one day in school, I was with the founding pastor of my fellowship. He was still on campus then. It was just about a year or so after I came in. And then he, was, he began to cry. He broke down. And, he went. and then he said, I feel God. I said, why? You started a fellowship. How could you have failed God? He said, yes, I started a fellowship, but I didn't really do the work. I just started a fellowship. And while he was sobbing, I told him, I'm here. I was just in my year one. I'm here. And I covenanted my life for God. I said, this campus, the light will shine in this school. Darkness will be dispelled. Some of you have heard different stories from different people, but that's the truth. That's the fact. There's a sister in this church. She also has a branch of her business in Enugu. She told me what the pastor of House on Drug Enugu told her about me. Some of the things that I've been saying here that sometimes sounded like, is it true? He said he went there and he affirmed it and even said more. It wasn't because my interests have never been to make a name till tomorrow. That's why I shy away from many things. Pastor Richard will tell you several, you know, honorary award that I've been invited for. By now, I should have up to three or four doctorates. I've never honored one. Because it's not my interest. I've never honored one. Several kinds of award and whatever. My interest is not making a name. My interest is the depth of impact. The depth of impact. And I will pay any price for it. But to make the name, oh, far from it. Except it happens accidentally but not on purpose. If it's on purpose, uh, I probably won't be here. That's the kind of life that God has called every one of us to live. That's the kind of life. That's the quality of life. And you have the potential. That's, you know, the, 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 the worst part of it is that you have the potential. But many times we look at others rather than looking at ourselves. The person you are looking at, does the person have two heads? No. No. For some of us, we've gone through things that made us feel small. You are not your circumstance. We all go through things. I've been through some stuffs. I've been through some stuffs. But the broken becomes masters at mending. You see, there are some things, if you've not experienced it, you wouldn't understand what it means when others are experiencing it. That's why I was sharing with Pastor Rachel earlier on. She came to me and told me about one of the people she prayed for on, on Friday during the graduation. And that the person was sharing with her the experience she is just coming out of. And how it came to the compassion. And I smiled. And she said something. She said, asking herself, if I didn't go through it before that Friday, before I met this girl, how would I have been able to handle it? I said, that's life. The broken becomes masters as many. Sometimes God may allow you 
to see and encounter certain things that may be unpleasant so that when you get up, you understand. You are not high, you are not, you know, you don't, you don't look down on people. Your compassion flows so much. You are, you are willing to fold your sleeves and get down to help somebody stand. Why? Because you know what it is to be right there on the floor. What are you living your life for? What are you living your life for? How many people have you impacted? With everything God has put inside you, will you say, boldly say, that you are giving your all? Some of us are skilled in many things. But how are those things serving God? How are they serving the kingdom? How are they helping to move the kingdom forward? Somebody might say, I don't really know, have so much skill. You don't need to have so much skill. You don't even need to. He, God just needs you. Simple. Once there is a will, there is a way. The fact that you can use the phone alone is a skill. You can join the social media team and be useful. Make your life count. Make it count. Join the intercessory team. They meet here every Friday night. Young people like you. And they pray their hearts out for the church and for souls. You can serve there. You don't have to serve where you, the whole world will notice you. If you serve just to be noticed, there's no reward in it. God won't reward you. If you serve just to be noticed, if you serve just for the applause, God, I can bet you there will be no reward. Find out from Matthew chapter 6. Jesus uh, um, and share the story there. Your intention and motive for serving must not be because you want to be clapped for. That's why if no one notices you, you can still be serving. You don't care. If no one claps for you, you are still serving. If no one gives you a tap on the a pat on the back, you are still serving diligently. Why? Because you know that your reward comes from God. And you know that God cannot lie. So I want to call you today. I want to stir your soul today. Make a decision. To give yourself now that you see a breath in your nostril. Who have been by the uh, a grave side of certain people who had so much dreams. I look at them. I remember the dream they had. The dreams some of them probably shared with me. How I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. And here they are, lifeless. They can't do any of those things anymore. If they knew five years before their departure, that they only had five more years to live. I tell you, that five years is, would be more than enough to fulfill all their dreams because they will work day and night to make those dreams come to pass. So ladies and gentlemen, this afternoon, what if, just asking, what if, what if you begin to live your life today like you know what? I probably have five more years. Probably have ten more years. If somehow you believe that I probably have five or ten more years, would it make a difference in the quality of life you live? A thousand times yes. Your choices will be different. How you spend your time will be different. Who you work with will be different. You cut off a lot of frivolities. You be single-minded. You won't sit back and complain unnecessarily. You won't sit back and feel sorry for yourself because self-pity has never achieved anything good. Why will you even indulge in self-pity? Whatever you are going through, somebody else is going through far worse. Oh, pastor, you don't understand. My parents abandoned me. So what? I can tell you show you several people here right now that their parents are abandoned. They never even saw their parents for once. And yet they are making something good out of their life. Pastor, you don't understand. I was so active until 
something happened that discouraged me and I've been, you know, finding it difficult to stand in there. Get up and stop licking your wound. There's still more to live for than whatever is in the past. Get up, clean up, stand up, and run forward. Paul said, forgetting the things that are behind. I press forward to the mark of the prize of the high calling in Christ. And so I will charge you today, for those who have been sitting down comfortably, make a choice. What will you volunteer yourself for from today? Hey there, ever thought of a community where you can grow spiritually while networking with like minds and having fun? Welcome to the Wave community. Blam, 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 blam. In the Wave community, we are diverse groups of energetic and vibrant youth. We come together to fellowship, we make lasting memories, we worship God in truth and with all devotion. Ecclesiastes 2 of us won. Remember that I created all the days of your youth when you still have energy. So yeah, in the community, we'll pray, we'll slay, we get swag, and we get altar. Do you need guidance? We've got you covered. At the Rave community, we mentor one another, grow spiritually and mentally through God's word from our father, Reverend Lawrence Onachi. There's no discrimination here. We fear nothing because we are rivers. We support and love each other through thick and thin. One thing about the Rave community is that we're a big family. But we also have smaller groups called Rave Tribes. These tribes help us to get closer to people who are similar to us. So we have friends nearby. We stick together and support each other through everything, no matter where we come from. It's all about accepting each other and learning together. Ready to experience all this? Join us, attend our super packed service, and participate in building a vibrant community with us. Your heavenly rays start here. Join the Rave community today and discover a home where we fellowship with God with other vibrant youths. Guys, you know what I mean? Is. 1 p.m. every Sunday. See you there. The Rave community. The Rave community. We fear nothing!